Hey, it's Mike Freeman with Man or Machine. Here's a project that I built that combines Zapier tables, Zapier interfaces, and just good old zaps. So uh, I'll kind of take you guys through it, uh, but this is a recipe website. So pretty normal, right? There's plenty of those out there. Uh, mine is actually generated by conversing with an AI chatbot. So here is uh, an embedded interface on my website where you can go in here, you can select a chef that you want to speak with. So here we can say, give me ideas for fancy dinner rolls. Oops, I misspelled it, but uh, AI is really great about <laughs> not knowing if you misspelled something. Um, so he gives me a couple different ideas and I can tell him to write these up. Um, so when I click this button, it runs, this chatbot runs through a zap. So the last comment that was sent, it basically parses out um, the five ideas, right? So let me show you kind of how some of the backend table stuff works. So let's say I ask Dr. Nitrato, give me some ideas for strawberry salad. He's going to give me like one post, if you will, that has five items in it, right? So if I were to click prescribe me a recipe, so that entire entry, uh, gets put here. So when I, when I select prescribe that recipe to me, the entire piece of content that he sent goes into this table. Whenever there's a new item that appears in this table, I have another zap that runs that basically parses out that information, right? So this is just one big block of text that I get from ChatGPT, and then I have it run through a zap. And in that zap, it splits out all of these items into individual things, right? So those... Uh, gets sent into this other embedded interface. And what this does is each idea gets split up or parsed into these individual entries or records in a table, right? So this is the status column of each of these, or status field. And each column does a different thing. So if I just say ignore it, it goes away forever. Some of the ideas that the chefs come up with are not the best. So I need a way to delete stuff. So that goes away after a second. Or I can say, write it up, and that will trigger the big zap that runs that sort of does everything here. So inside the zap, again, it's triggered by uh, a record meeting a specific status. So this record triggers ChatGPT to go in and write the initial recipe. So that initial recipe gets created. I take that recipe, and then I start to define what I want the images to look like. So I trained ChatGPT to become like a food photographer. And so it writes the prompts that later gets sent to uh, Midjourney. So this is the Imagine API, Midjourney API, sort of. But so this sends those images off. I then pick up those images um, from this API. And then I upload all those images to my WordPress website. And once I know where those images are going to live, so the end URL what those are going to be, then I can write the recipe. And so when I write the recipe, um, I'm embedding images like into the article itself, right? So I need to know where those images live to be able to do that. And then there's some other fun stuff that I'm doing here. So I have this thing that I call the recipe block. Um, so it just shows you like, here's the difficulty rating, prep time, cook time, et cetera. Again, that's also ChatGPT. It reads everything and kind of breaks it all up into individual entries for me. I'm generating the schema that Instacart needs. So from my website, you can click on get ingredients with Instacart. And that schema is what um, Instacart needs to be able to put it together. So what Instacart does is it actually says like, okay, these are kind of staple items. So you might not need these, but here's the stuff that's going to be unique for your recipe. And that's just all part of how the schema gets written. And I'm actually using ChatGPT to generate the schema. It took me a long time to train it to work, but it does. I do some cleanup inside of here. I'm using something called Auphonics to create like a little mini commercial for it. I send all that stuff to the website, post it to Facebook, uh, so post it to Pinterest. So here I'm creating the image for Pinterest that looks like this. So this has the title, the cook time, prep time, really great picture, links to my website, etc. So really cool project. I've had a lot of fun doing this. I think I've, I've made close to like a thousand recipes at this point. So 
It wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for tables and interfaces. Thanks.